happy hump day guys all right i do want to take the time out to apologize that i have missed a day yesterday time just flew by but as you can see um i have a new format for the daily devotional today we're going to be covering two days which is day four and day five and with the new um, format, you're going to have to <laughs> bear with me. I was upset because I couldn't show my face along with the, um, the screen. But I just realized that it's really not about seeing me. It's about, you know, spreading the word and hoping that I'm helping somebody along the way. So day four is going to be over the secret to contentment. And the scripture for day four is Philippians 4, 11 through 15. Well, Philippians chapter four, verses 11 through 15. That sounds better. All right. So we're about to get started. And I'm not going to um, have two prayers, although you may have a longer prayer like me because I missed a day. So usually when I miss a day, I pray a little bit longer, a little bit harder, a little bit stronger. But y'all, let's go ahead and get started. So, day four, the search for happiness. The um, title is The Secret to Contentment. One phone call, that's all it takes to turn a life upside down. Everyone has a story of a life spinning out of control. Maybe it was an accident, a call from the doctor, a relationship that ended or an unexpected layoff. We know that everything can change in an instant. It can all be gone tomorrow. And if it's gone, will we still be happy? That's a good question. I know sometimes if I stub my toe, my whole day just messed up. Or if somebody just calls me and they tell me about, you know, their hardships, guess what? My day is messed up because I'm sitting here thinking about them. And then when I think about them, I'm thinking about other situations and it just takes my mood by storm and by surprise. And it shouldn't be that way. And then it just goes to show or say, no, this is not a trick question. Life is uncertain. And this is so true like life is so uncertain I can agree with that can you guys agree with that we are not in control if being in control is the only way to be happy we are destined for a life of chasing temporary happiness and things that fade as quickly as they are found the Apostle Paul talks about finding true happiness true contentment that lasts through the ups and downs of life True happiness is not about what we have, but what God has done for us. Our happiness is in the provider, not the provision. Let me say that one more time. Our happiness is in the provider, not the provision. That's a strong statement. Our happiness is in the giver, not the gifts given. Think about it. Everything we have is a gift from God. The ability to earn income comes from him. The economy that keeps our investment stable is from him. The health that we experience today is from God. Is there contentment in your life? Hmm, for me, no, I don't think so. It's like I'm emotionally unstable, but the good thing is I know about it and I can pray about it. To help to ask God to help me with my emotional unstability. Is that a word? I don't know. But yeah. True happiness is found by those who acknowledge and daily live in the reality that they are dependent on God. If you've been seeking happiness in all the wrong places, spend time today putting your trust back in the one who provides, not in the things he provides. So do you guys um find yourself saying like oh i would be better off if i had this or if god blessed me with that or i'm blessed because god blessed me with these things does these things make you happy or is it the thought of knowing that god is providing for you makes you happy i don't really know for myself but i do know that every day that i wake up it is a blessing so i'm about to read the scripture and then we'll get into day five all right, so the verse is going to be 
Well, the scripture is Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 through 15. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in, that, in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. So that is the close of day four, and we're about to get into day five. All right, we have day five. It's going to be meekness defined, and the scripture is going to be John chapter 3, verse 27. Yeah. All right. It says meekness defined. John the Baptist, he lived in the wilderness and made his own clothes out of camel hair, sporting long hair and beard. He was a man's man, if ever there was one. If you're picturing Jeremiah Johnson or Hugh Glass from The Revenant, you're not far off. I'm talking about John the Baptist. In Matthew 11, Jesus says there was no man greater than John the Baptist. That's pretty high praise coming from Jesus. At the time, John the Baptist was leading a very large ministry. People came from miles around to hear him speak and to be baptized. Throughout his ministry, John has been saying that someone far greater will come, the Messiah. Finally, at the height of John's popularity and in the midst of the crowds of people gathered, Jesus shows up to be baptized by John. Think about what this would do for John's fame as a minister. He is one, well, he is the one who gets to baptize Jesus. The Holy Spirit descends on Jesus like a dove. There is a voice from heaven saying, This is my son, whom I love and am well pleased. In the midst of this amazing moment, something interesting begins to happen. All of a sudden, the attention moves from John to Jesus. John's followers sees what has happened and start to worry. We are losing our fame. We are losing our followers. Jesus is now more popular than John. Real meekness is on full display when John responds. John does not become angry or frustrated that Jesus is suddenly more popular. He doesn't fight to hold on to his fame. Instead, John recognizes his place in a much bigger story. He acknowledges that from the beginning, this was never about him. He sees his story in light of God's glory. This is meekness. Recognizing God has given me a story and the point of my life is to reveal his glory. The fact is, it has always been about God. Any fame or acclaim that comes to me is all about his name, not mine. God may be using your life for very significant things, but when held up to the story of redemption, meekness sees your story as a very small part of what God is doing to reveal his glory. Meekness helps shape and proper shape a proper perspective of life so that we don't get puffed up with pride or defeated in shame. Meekness is an invitation to live for the story that matters most of all. All right, we're about to go to the scripture. John chapter 3 verse 27. To this John replied, a person can receive only what is given them from heaven. So basically out of day 5 what I want to say is take every day as it's your last and always give God the praise for any and everything that was given to you and also show the character of Christ so everyone can see it that's just how I that's what I'm thinking so comment below <clears throat> like the video share subscribe it is free thanks for watching you guys have a wonderful and blessed day